Do you know what body type you have and how that affects your workout program? Today, fitness model Zeb Atlas is here and he's gonna tell you how to get the most out of your workouts for your particular body shape. Great to have you today, Zeb. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. So I will just say, you know, I've interviewed a lot of fitness models on this show and I've had mm -hmm. some big guys, but I think you are the biggest. You're what, 6'3 and 250? Yeah, yeah about that. Okay. It's pretty close. So uh, we've got a photo here of uh, Zeb. Okay, yeah. so what kind of body shape are you? You're, you're the big kind, I know. I but, would probably uh, say it was a mesomorph. Mesomorph, okay. But you know, there's you know, there's endomorphs and ectomorphs as well. Uh -huh. And those are the three body types. So mesomorph is big. Eh, is that big and more tends to carry more muscle than the other ones? Mm -hmm. Endomorph is 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 a thinner person mm -hmm. who have, probably has trouble um, putting on uh, putting on the muscle. Uh -huh. And the, the uh, excuse me, ectomorph does. And then endomorph is a more of a heavier set person. Mm -hmm. who probably would have to do more cardio. Uh, than, the, than obviously the ectomorph, and uh, but I would suggest probably both doing the same amount of weight training. Mm -hmm. That that won't change depending on your body type. No. But for mesomorph though, that means that it's pretty easy for you to put on muscle. Yeah, for or? sure. I'm act yeah. So it's just genetics, right? That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some are more. I want to have an excuse, you know. Yeah, some are more. Some are more like blessed that. than others, mm -hmm. uh, Greg. But you know. So what what body type am I? Mm. Forget a height here for a minute. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I'd probably see you're you know probably more of a and ectomorph. Ectomorph. Yeah, so you probably um, have to get in there and really hit the weights hard. And Actually, you know, it's, it's easy for me to lose weight. Mm -hmm. I need to do that at the moment, but it's easy for me to lose weight, but um, it's harder for me to put on muscle. I mean, I can get really uh -huh. skinny, but it's yeah. hard to get big. Yeah. You know, or at least I haven't. <laughs> well, then I would say, you know, more focus on the weight training and the proper diet, you know, getting a lot of protein and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And uh, obviously rest. You know, good good amount of sleep every night is a very important part of the factor as well. Hmm. How, how much sleep do you get every night? Well, I try to get like seven or eight hours seven. myself. Yeah. Yeah. I well, sleep is that that sounds easy enough. I could do that. I just need to schedule it. But uh. yeah. Well, it's it's <laughs> you know, sleep is very important for people, and not a lot of people get enough of it right. to you know recuperate and to, and to. But I've heard bodybuilders and stuff say that though that you actually if you don't get enough sleep that you won't. Mm. Yeah, I think when I don't get enough sleep too. The next day, if I only get four or five hours, I'm more likely to, to binge my diet. I, I crave a lot more carbohydrates and more more binge foods because mm -hmm. I'm just tired and cranky. I just want something to make me, you know, feel good. So. You must be a lot of fun to be around when you're tired and cranky. Eh, not so much. <laughs> you know. Well, so. Uh, when you say you binge, and I find it, because I find it very interesting to hear you know when I interview these guys what they're eating and what they're doing and all this. So, for what is a binge for you? Mm. You just start eating ho hos or something or what? Well, not exactly, but you know I have, like I think for me like the breakfast I'll crave a lot of times like pancakes or something. Mm -hmm. So I'll have like pancakes with syrup and butter or or late at night you know I'll have you know I might have a bowl of ice cream or some chocolate uh -huh. chip cookies, but. Typically, I don't binge that often, but no. you know. So how how often? Every couple of weeks or something? Uh, or? Yeah, about every you know two to three weeks, I'll have a you know a good bowl of ice cream or some you know quite a bit of chocolate chip cookies. Okay. So now, but what is a typical? What, what is your workout regimen? Um, can you take us through like, a um, typical day or? Yeah, typical day. Well, I like to do cardio uh, first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Maybe some some black coffee to get the uh, the metabolism going, but but no mm -hmm. calories, and and I feel that. Uh, and because I, I've read in some of the magazines, I guess that caffeine. They some will say even like drink a coke before you work out because uh, the caffeine raises your. Yeah, but I don't. I wouldn't go with the coke because of the sugar content. Mm. But you know, like straight black coffee, no calories. Uh, mm. And then when you do it first thing in the morning, you're going to use fat as a fuel source a lot quicker because you don't have the uh, the carbohydrates to burn up okay. uh, in that workout in the morning session before. Um, before you use that fat as a fuel source, so so every morning, pretty much. Uh, well, I, I would typically say probably about five or six days a week. I do that about you know, thirty-five to forty-five minutes. Uh, now I, w I was happy to hear you say that actually because I like to run, mm -hmm. and although my schedule <laughs> the last few days I haven't been able to run, but but usually I run about six days a week. But I've heard so many people say that if you run. You can't get big, or you won't get big. It'll break down muscle, mm. but it can't be breaking down muscle because. Well, the pace that I go at, I don't think it's breaking down muscle. I, I typically go on a, a walk, um, or I go on a treadmill and an incline oh. of about you know five or six grade, and, a, and just a pace of about three and a half miles an hour. Mm. So I'm not typically getting my heart rate up that fast. Where so it's not sprinting. Where, or something yeah, like I'm not. That, I'm not you know. overdoing it, so to say. Okay. So. so then, after your cardio, what do you do? Uh, my cardio, I eat breakfast, hmm. and that typically consists of about 
oh, eight or nine large egg whites mm -hmm. and uh, about a cup of oatmeal. Yeah. And I have my trainer, Eric Carlson, has put me on that kind of a program. And I, I love those damn egg whites, I'm telling you. I thought I, anyway, when people first told me, and oatmeal. Yeah. I hated oatmeal when I was growing up, yeah. but I love oatmeal now. So, yeah. I, But I hear a lot of people say that, egg whites and oatmeal for yeah. breakfast. Yeah, well, you got so the good, you know, protein source, low-fat protein source, mm -hmm. and a long, you know, slow-burning carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. So your, your energy is, you know, pretty steady state for, for a couple hours anyway after you eat it. Do you put anything in the egg whites? Because well, I put, I like to season them with black pepper and a little mm -hmm. Tabasco sauce. Because somebody told flavor. me onions and carrots and mushrooms, well, and I, I'm surprised how good that tastes when you put that in oh, there. I'm sure it does. So. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, anything helps. Lots of vegetables are always good. Now, do you put anything on the oatmeal, or is it plain? Uh, well, I put some Splenda mm, okay. and some cinnamon just for a little flavor. Mm -hmm. But it's you know, again, it's no calorie. I've been putting some strawberries on there. Is that that okay? Yeah, or yeah that's fine. Yeah, okay. I mean, the simple sugar may not be the best, you know, in the in the fruit source, but because mm. that'll tend to, you know, give your body an insulin spike, mm. which may t help, you know, have you hold on to body fat a little bit. Yeah, I wondered about that because somebody else I talked to once told me like it, we were actually having breakfast and he didn't eat the oatmeal because he said that he doesn't put. I mean, he ate the oatmeal but, did, but didn't put any fruit on it. And I had a little bit of fruit on it. Yeah. But I've heard a lot of bodybuilders say that um, they will not have. Um, yeah, it, they don't eat a lot of fruit. Is yeah, that right? especially in a strict dieting phase when they're really trying to maximize body fat reduction. Mm -hmm. Simple sugars are, are pretty much a no-no for that. Mm -hmm. The only time really that it could be necessary is after the workout. Mm -hmm. We need to replace those glycogen, st glycogen stores in your muscles to have a little, uh, some simple carbs, maybe you know, 20 to 30 grams of simple carbs after your workout with a, a protein source as well. Yeah, because I, I like. Sugar, so for me, fruit was a good way to. Yeah, yeah. Probably better than the candy bar or something. Oh yeah, definitely. But since this diet, though, I've really been, because ever, like I say, so many guys say the same thing. I've been really trying to give up all the mm -hmm. sugar that I had been eating all the time, like that. But so okay, so after you have your oatmeal, then what? Uh, typical days, you know, I have an oatmeal. I'll, I'll go to my website, check my, you know, emails, um, message, you know, message people back, and then I'm hitting the gym about an hour and a half later. So and, that's what, uh, what time is it now? About it's about probably 11 o'clock in the morning, okay. so I'm going to the gym, doing a weight workout. Of course, before that, I have to have another meal, of course, before I go to the gym, mm -hmm. so I probably will have a, a protein bar or, or just a, a meal replacement shake prior to going to the gym, Okay. about you know about half hour, 35 minutes before going to the gym. And, and so you like the protein bars or the protein, you're just buying mm -hmm. them off the shelf, the regular protein bars or shakes or um, something that you... Well, for me at this time, yeah, because I, I'm, pretty, I'm more of in a maintaining phase, mm -hmm. you know, I don't really need to... I'm not sure really trying to get that much bigger or trying to drop that much weight so mm -hmm. because see, I like those bars I actually think they taste better than candy bars yeah I love some those of them bars pretty do lot. depending on you, know, you want to look for some that are not really high in sugar or overly high in fat as well you, you know keep the calories around uh, 250 to 300 in those bars okay yeah because some people have told me uh, one phase like I was practically living on those because I liked them so much and yeah. one trainer said well you know there there are a lot of sugar a lot of carbs yeah. or something, and you couldn't but yet I still hear a lot of people say they take them, yeah so. yeah I would I would limit it to you know one a day or one every other day just not something you need to do you know two to three times a day that that would be overkill and you, you wouldn't find your your getting your best weight right, weight loss results for me. Did, did all you know the time. that Snickers is coming out with a protein bar or something like that? Some I didn't kind of know that, bar. no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think you'll probably be using it, but I just No, thought. no, I'd be curious to see the uh, the calorie count and the <laughs> I think it's probably the same candy bar and they just changed the label yeah, or something. They might like have that, so. added a few more peanuts for extra protein or something. But those are good. <laughs> so okay, so then when you're in the gym, um, what's your how does your workout go through the week then? Are you working at the same time throughout the week? Or? Typically when I'm home in Las Vegas, but I do travel a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it does. Like, particularly I might do, I, I split up my body parts, so I might do like my chest uh, one day and that'll, you know. So what do you do for chest? Um, I typically start off with, with a press, like, a, and, I, and I really like free weights a lot better than the machines. Mm -hmm. um, I think they get better results, but uh, is that better for balance or? Mm, or yeah, well, you know, it just the... uses more of you know, the mind and more, uh, you know, more muscle as well because you have to use a lot of uh, ancillary muscles as well. It's not just a machine where it's your chest. I mean, when you're using a bench, you know, you got your triceps, your front delt is in the, involved in the motion as well. So, um, and and obviously balance as well. So what are your, I'm something you're looking at, these are huge arms, by the way. Well, <laughs> How big, what, are, what are your measurements? I saw you're 6'3". 20, 21 for the okay. arms. 20. Okay. And what's your chest? Oh, it's about uh, 53. Oh. So. 
Okay. I'm a big boy. <laughs> I, I have to write down everything yeah. you say today and uh, try uh -huh. to implement it. So, uh. okay. So, um, so, so the the chest routine. I usually start off with like a, a barbell. Um, pressed. I do like three sets of about 10 to 12. I don't really go overly heavy to, to get down to like um, five or six reps. I just don't feel that builds a lot of muscle. That may be a lot of strength, but it doesn't do what I'm looking for, which is to build quality muscle. Uh -huh. uh, so, so what's your max? Well, on the bench, it's around, uh, oh, I think 385. Uh -huh. So quite a bit. So that's even more than your body weight, obviously. So. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get to my body weight level, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we will be right back with Zeb Atlas right after this. We are back with Zeb Atlas today talking about how you can get in this kind of shape here. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so you're doing chest, um, you're benching 385, that's your max, and then what do you use on a typical set then? Um, well, typically I just do some warm-up sets, like 135, which is, you know, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. I can do that. There you go. And then put on two plates, which is 225. Okay. Do like another warm-up set of, you know, you know, 10 to 12. And then to put on uh, three plates, which is 315. Okay, you lost me there already. I have to go back. <laughs> three plates, okay. 315, and okay. just do, you know, two working sets there, of, you know, between uh, right about 10 reps each. Okay. And that's, a, that's what I call enough for that, that exercise, and we'll go on to something else. We'll go on to an incline mo movement, either incline dumbbell, or you know, incline flat bench or incline incline bench uh -huh. for the upper chest. More of the flat bench is going to work more of the medial part of the chest. Uh -huh. Incline, when you're incline leaning back at like a 45 degree angle. It's more of the upper chest. So I do that. You yeah, because I mean, you can tell you've obviously got the whole. Because sometimes people yeah. have more upper or lower or whatever, but yeah. you've obviously developed the whole thing the whole way. Well, so. yeah, symmetry is very important. I think you got to work everything the same and um, work all your body parts so they. And then do, do you do a lot of decline too then for lower um, chest or how do you do that? My decline primarily consists of, of doing weighted dips, which I oh. feel that hits the um, the lower part of your chest as well, very well. So. And so, okay, and then are you, because I've read that, you know, like depending on the angle you're yeah, at. Yeah, lean more, leaning more forward will put more emphasis on your chest, or more straight up is more of the tricep. And how many plates are we, what are you holding when you're doing oh, that? Oh, probably like, a, you know, an 85 pound dumbbell strapped around my waist. Okay. Uh, gotta <laughs> add a little more, a little more resistance, you know. Yeah, I guess it would. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so is that all for chest or do you do more? Um, so do the incline for probably two to three sets of the incline and then two to three sets of the, of the weighted dips. Uh -huh. And then maybe finish with a, a pec deck uh, or a, a cable crossover, okay. you know, another two to three sets there. And, and so how long are you spending in the gym for? Uh, that workout for chest only takes about, you know, 40 minutes. Not 40 long. Minutes, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting too. When I talk yeah. to some, you know, some people who are in great shape like this, they'll tell me that it's it's not as much time as you might think. Yeah. And I guess it's once you get there, you're just maintaining it. But. Well, I think this would be a good amount for anybody, really, because um, I'm doing my cardio in the morning. It's not like I have to do cardio after I work out, so I separate it up. Mm -hmm. My gym time is really reduced that way. So, by the way, what did it take for you to get to this level? I mean, how? When, when did you well, start working out? And right after high school, I didn't do anything in high school. I was hmm. about 165 when I graduated in high school. 165? How tall were you? Well, same height, about six two, six three. Wow. Yeah. So you were scrawny. Yeah, I was <laughs> scrawny, but you I know. mean skinny. I mean, yeah, for yeah, yeah. Six three and 160. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty skinny. Yeah. Yeah. I, was I mean, lean. compared with, yeah. I was lean. So h how did you, what, was it hard for you before that, or were you just, mm. hadn't kicked in yet? No, or, I just know? never had weight trained before. Mm. I was a golfer in, in high school. Golfer? Yeah, played some baseball, but, you know, I didn't get into the into the weight training until right after my freshman year in college. I had a, you know, a conditioning class, and mm -hmm. I took to it, so to speak, and, <laughs> and, been, and how been long? at it for the last 17 years straight. 17 years, wow. And so how long did it take you to get big? Um... um not that long, really. Um, I started, had some good, you know, coaching right away through that class and through people I asked a lot of questions, read a lot of magazines, mm -hmm. and just probably two to three years, two, three I started years. And were you shape. this big at that point? Or oh, well, not this big, but, you know, I just, you know, was constantly, I thought I was at that time. You know, <laughs> everybody thinks, you know, they're, they look pretty good, and, you know, two to three years after, but, you know, obviously now it's a lot, quite a bit bigger than it was then. And... So if it, did you, well I've started using some supplements and stuff that my trainers uh -huh. recommended and I, you know, I've had various thoughts about that, I wasn't yeah. sure, but I thought, well, if I'm really going to try to do this, I'm going to go just 
follow his recommendation and it's working for him, so I'm gonna to do this. Yeah. But did you do it all naturally or did you use supplements or No, I used I used some supplements, or? but um, basically whole foods are gonna give you the best nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, but you make sure you obviously when you want to build muscle you wanna, you know, up your protein intake. Uh -huh. So maybe um, meal replacement shakes or, or protein shakes will help as well. So how much protein are you taking every day? Mm -hmm. You must be taking a hell of a lot of protein. I would imagine right around uh, 250 grams a day. Wow. Which is, you know, quite a bit, but not like some of the, you know, bodybuilders you read about, like the pros, they're taking 500, 600 really? grams a day, so. Wow. And, yeah. and they can handle that, I guess? There's, you don't have side uh, effects or something? If you... I guess, I, I would think you'd have to, obviously drinking a lot of water helps flush out uh, the kidneys and such, but you know, they obviously they have to drink a ton of it mm. to, to combat that high protein intake. Okay, well, I think we left you at the gym. You were doing chest, and so mm -hmm. I guess we'll just continue on with the day then. So then afterward, you're, okay. well, you said you're pretty much, that's done. No, no, the that, that's done with the chest. Or? And then I might okay. do some, uh, typically on, on chest day, I'll, I'll do calves as mm -hmm. well. And that's, you know, seated calf raises, uh -huh. you know, three sets there, and then standing calf raises. Okay. You know, one's going to work the soleus, and then one's going to work the gastrocnemius more. So. And there, I'm assuming those are somewhere down here. Yeah, those are your lower leg there. Both okay. down there. And uh, how long is that workout then? Oh, that, that only takes about 10 minutes there. Hmm. And then I finish it off with about you know five or 10 minutes of abs. So okay. that, that's about a 60 minute workout. So about an hour. So five or 10 minutes for abs. Yeah. And abs every day? Um, I wouldn't do them every day, but I, I do them about three times a week. They're okay. still a muscle and they need to recover like everything else, so. Hmm. And, but just five or 10 minutes at a time? Uh, yeah, oh. actually. For me. Because you know, some of those abs classes are like half an hour or something. Yeah. I always feel like I should probably go in there for an hour or something like six days a week. Well, I would maybe do it once a week or once every other week doing that that 30 minutes straight. But, uh -huh. you know, 15 minutes, you know, a couple times a week I think should be fine if you do it correctly. So. Now, is that it for exercise on that day or do you do more? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Okay. So then the next day, is that an off day or uh, are you... No, typically that next day is the same and the same thing oh, in the actually, morning. Oh, actually, you know what? But I have to go back a day. We, um, do we get your lunch and your dinner? What are you eating? Well, tip, right after I work out, I need that uh, replenishment, so I'll have a, a protein shake okay. and, and mix with some carbs to get mm -hmm. that... Uh, glycogen restored in my mouth, you know, get them to the muscles. Now, when you say mixed with carbs, what do you mean? Uh, protein and carbs, like, you know, like a meal replacement shake. It has carbohydrates in it. Okay, some, so it's actually some simple fruit. That's when fruit, I would take okay. it in. Some more fruit, okay. Some protein and some, like, a banana mixed in the shake or something. Okay. And, and then that's when you would take creatine. I don't know, did your... Did he recommend well, creatine? Well, right now it's like NO2 and cell mass, and I don't know what... The cell mass is the creatine, yeah. Okay, so that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And one you take prior to one is the other one. Yeah, one yeah. you take prior, one you take after. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the creatine after, to you know, that'll kind of help with uh, the muscle building as well. Okay. So. And um, and then you have more snacks in the afternoon, or...? Um, yeah, I'll, then I'll have, like, a whole food meal about an after hour that uh, an hour after that shake. Okay. And... Um, you know, that's typically chicken and brown rice hmm. and some broccoli, some vegetables. So. And then, are, are, do you keep on eating them throughout the evening? Or? Uh, yeah, I typically do. I typically uh, will have another, probably one more meal, whole hmm. food meal. Um, maybe it's a, a steak and a, and a yam and some vegetables or some fish and some, some more rice. Uh, and then like, you know, two hours before bed, typically have a protein shake. Another protein shake. Yeah. Okay. So you like those shakes too, huh? Well, I got to get my protein in. So. so how many calories do you think you have on uh, an average day? Typically about uh, 3,500 a day. Oh. Yeah, that's the other thing. I tell you, you know, it's, it's great that one of the payoffs, I guess, when you get in this kind of shape that you can eat that much food but still be in great shape because... Well, my body needs it. it weighing 250 pounds, it kind of needs to be... Constantly, you know, because you know what, fuel hundred calories a day would do to the average person. That's a pound right there. A pound a week. <laughs> you did a, if you did in a week, yeah. you'd be like like the guy from Super Size Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with Zeb Atlas right after this. We are back with Zeb Atlas, telling you how you can get in this kind of shape today. So. Uh, I think we got a few more days of the week to cover here, so that we got through your chest day and stuff. So the next day, then what? Where does that leave you? Well, leg training. Leg training. Yeah, I start off. I go to the gym. I'm doing the exercise bike for a couple of minutes to get warmed up. Now, are you still running in the morning or on the treadmill first in the morning or on leg day or not? Um, 
Some people do, don't, but I do actually. I, I think it, you know, I'm not looking to get to build that much more muscle in my legs or to get uh, that much bigger anymore. So, so I'll, I'll do it just to keep leaner. Okay. And so still you do, do that it 40 that minutes day. of cardio, and yeah. then you start. Okay, with the yeah. Some people might think they might their legs might be fatigued and not be fresh enough for a leg workout, but it, it doesn't affect me so much. Okay. So then, what are you doing? Uh, you know, like the bike to warm up, and then it's right into um, like a free bar squat. Um, and do you know three sets there? Um, great form. Form is very important on this exercise. Obviously, if you don't have you know if you don't know how to do it, ask an instructor mm -hmm. uh, to, you know to help you with yeah. this exercise. That's one re reason I need a trainer is just mm -hmm. to watch the form because I, yeah. yeah, that's the first. Well, one thing that goes is I don't push myself hard enough without right. a trainer, and the other thing is I think the form goes. Yeah, exactly, and, that, and that's a, that's a great reason to hire a trainer for both those reasons for motivation and you got to do the exercises properly if you want to see the results. Have you ever worked with a trainer or have you always just done it yourself? Um, I have a workout partner who was sort of okay. like a trainer who we both kind of read a lot and learned a lot, and he was very strong in biomechanics and, and exercise like that, so okay. we kind of helped each other. So, so he, he's pretty big too, then? Oh yeah, pretty big. <laughs> well, well, that's good coach to have then. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so what else are you doing then for legs? Uh, after that, it's probably a leg press for um, three to four sets mm -hmm. of about, you know, 12 to 15 repetitions there. Again, pretty heavy, um, but you know, good form, good slow uh, reps, and really feel it in the muscle, feel the burn. Mm. Um, and then I might do uh, three sets of hack squats, mm. um, and then some leg extensions, um, like three sets of leg extensions. But you said you do the regular squats and the hack squats. Or? Yeah, okay. or typically or or alternated. I just wonder because or alternated uh, in the workout. One thing I have to watch for is bending a lot on the squats, mm -hmm. and so and I hear that. Some people tell me that tall guys in general tend to bend. Yeah, so it, it's, it is harder for a taller person. It's mm -hmm. you know tough to you don't want your knees to go over your feet, so you really can, you have to almost feel like you you're sitting back into it. Yeah, that's uh, something like sitting in a chair. Yeah, or and yeah, I'm still working on that. But. Yeah. Okay, so is that it for legs or what else? Uh, well, that's it for quadriceps. You quadriceps. still have to do the the back of the leg, the hamstring. Okay. So we gotta make everything even here. So what do you do for the hamstring? Um, hamstrings will start off with a, a seated leg curl. Um, probably three sets of, of ten there, and then some uh, stiff-legged deadlifts with either dumbbells or a barbell, and that really if you can really feel the stretch in your in your hamstrings and and a good pull. It really really you really feel it in the next day and get sore by yeah. doing those. Uh, I, yeah, one time I did calves, and um, mm -hmm. usually I don't get sore after my workouts, but I hadn't because I, I run a lot. Yeah, but I was doing a different kind of you know doing the machine for calves uh -huh. this time, and I was sore for a couple of days and yeah. like waddling around. There you go. So. And then I might finish with some some abs again on this day. Abs, okay. Yeah. Another five or ten minutes. Yeah, that's about it. And then the next day, what are you doing? Uh, the next day is typically just off completely, mm -hmm. but the cardio is still in the morning, uh, depending on how tight my legs are. Sometimes it, I feel that you know my legs are sore getting on the, the treadmill for 40 minutes, loosens up, and I feel better throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next day, take that day off. Uh, so you take two days off? No, just just one day off in a row. Oh, okay. And then the next day I'm in the back in the gym training again, okay. doing back. Back. So uh, typically start off with some lat pull downs mm -hmm. um, to the front. I, f I feel behind going behind the the head. You know, it's, it's kind of hard on the on the rotator cuff. Oh, okay, so you do the yeah front. Okay. to the front. Uh, and then, what kind of weight do you use on that? Um, probably around two twenty five. Okay. So. To start off with that, I need a couple sets of ten, and then I feel is the best back exercise uh, bent over barbell rows. Oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I do them with an underhand grip, and it really really hits the the meat of the lat. Uh, and how much are you doing on that? Oh, uh, about uh, two seventy five. <laughs> I have to go uh, that next time I do those. Okay, two seventy five. Okay. Yeah, try it. Yeah, you like it. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. So I do that, and then. Um, typically do some uh, just pull-ups with body weight. At this time, my back is pretty fatigued, so um, you know, getting eight of them is, is sort of a struggle. Pulling up 250 for eight is, is sort of a struggle. So I do those, and I really feel my back. And then I might end with some just some uh, seated row. Okay. Um, and then, well, we've only got about a minute left here, but okay. um, so you have one more day. Let's see, we didn't even get through your whole week. Well, <laughs> that's what happens when you're this big. So, um, <laughs> but there would be what one or two other days that you'd work yeah, out a week, or yeah, typically just you know shoulders and arms. I can typically get that in in one day, uh, the next day because um, I really don't need a lot of work in my shoulders and arms. So I just do it uh, not as much as the rest of my body. Um, 
and then that's about it. Yeah, and then I then I typically so it's a two on one on two on one off two on okay. one off okay. program is what I follow. Alrighty, well I'm going to be in the gym tomorrow, so I will go uh, try to. Yeah. Implement all this. Sounds good. <laughs> good luck, right? <laughs> well, this is Zeb Atlas. Uh, thank you, Zeb, for being here thank today. You. Nice uh, to meet fitness you. Fitness model telling us how we can get in great shape. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.